Ha-ha! It's Musical Talk, the UK's independent musical theatre podcast. Hello and welcome to another edition of Musical Talk. I'm Thos Ribbits and I love a quiz. I also love a riddle. So let's start today with one. What do you get if you cross Elf, the musical, with Edward Scissorhands, the ballet? Well, the answer is, of course, Santa Claus. Well, you'll be pleased to know that the rest of the episode, whilst it will be a quiz, won't feature riddles of that nature. The quiz is a general knowledge quiz, or perhaps less general, because actually all the questions are to do with musical theatre and film. And of course, it's a musical talk tradition at the end of the year to just have a little bit of fun. As we look back to some of the songs that we've heard this year and in the past on episodes of Musical Talk, and also just stretch our minds a little bit to see if we know enough about musical theatre. And when I say we, I'm talking about you, because I've compiled these questions, so I'm delighted to say I also know the answers. But this year we're doing something slightly different. We're going to be having a theme which links all the questions together. And that theme is Doctors. And the reason for that is that 2023 has been the 60th anniversary of one of my favourite television programmes, which is Doctor Who. It's one of the other abiding loves of my life outside of musical theatre. Now, you may remember that 10 years ago, when Doctor Who was a mere 50-year-old, we had an episode of Musical Talk where we spoke about a Doctor Who stage play called The Ultimate Adventure from 1989, which featured John Pertwee in the title role and then Colin Baker. And it featured three songs by Stephen Edis, who I interviewed in episode 369. And those songs were called Sky High, Business is Business and Strange Attractor which one online reviewer described as being one part Bananarama and two parts Tiffany. And that sounds to me like a fabulous Christmas cocktail. Fancy a glass of strange attractor? Well, I wouldn't say no. But as Doctor Who was 60 years old, I thought to myself, well, we've already spoken about Doctor Who as a musical. Why don't we investigate other Doctors in musicals? And so that's what we're going to be doing today. And having laid out my stall, I think it's only fair maybe to get on to the bread and butter of the day. So shall we start with the first question? And the answer to that, of course, is yes. Hooray! Thank you for your appreciation. Well, we've mentioned Doctor Who, so let's start today's programme with a question about the second most popular time-travelling Doctor. That's Doc Emmett Brown from Back to the Future, which, of course, is now a musical. Now, Doc Brown has been played with aplomb in the West End, and also on Broadway, by the actor Roger Bart. But what is Roger Bart's connection with Rent by Jonathan Larson? So whilst you're thinking about that, let's hear a song from John Paul Little's excellent Vote to Macbeth. It's called You Heard It Here First, and it's a reimagining of the three witches from Macbeth as modern-day newscasters. You heard it here first.
In the hour of need, it's an honour to bleed, and the country's freed from the traitor. We have won the war, and the country's restored, and it opens the door to something greater. I stand here humble and ready to serve. All this England's we throw you at her. Duncan may be calling the tune, but you'll be president someday soon. Your humble dragon is over. The curse, you heard it, you heard you heard it, you President must be strong, must be wise. It helps if he's charming with sensitive eyes. I feel I can offer the whole of the package. A scholar, a fighter, legitimate snackage. Tragically widowed, a father of one. You heard it here first from Vote Macbeth by John Paul Liddell, a wonderful show from this year's Edinburgh Festival Fringe. But the question was, what is Roger Bart's connection with Rent by Jonathan Larson? Well, Roger Bart was actually friends with Jonathan Larson and they both worked as waiters, as many an actor and theatre creative has had to do, in fairness, between jobs. And it's through that connection that Roger worked in early presentations of Jonathan Larson's various works, including Tick, Tick, Boom and Rent. And so the connection is that the main character, Roger, from Rent, is named after Roger Bart. Well, we're going to stay with Roger Bart for our second question. And of course, don't forget today's theme is about doctors in musicals. So here's the question. Roger Bart played the role of Frederick Frankenstein, the title character in the original 2007 Broadway production of Young Frankenstein, the musical by Mel Brooks. Now, Frederick Frankenstein is the son of Dr. Victor von Frankenstein, rather better known, of course, more broadly as Dr. Frankenstein. But what role did Roger Bart play in the workshop pre-production version of this musical? And to give you the traditional thinking time, we're going to hear a wonderful song written by and sung by Sue Casson, one of our great songwriters in this country, from her musical Two Tigers, and it's called I Can't Get Him Out of My Mind. Just come. 
Lovely song, beautifully arranged and played there. I Can't Get Him Out of My Mind, from Two Tigers, written and sung by Sue Casson. Now, the question was, Roger Bart played Frederick Frankenstein in Young Frankenstein, the musical, when it opened on Broadway in 2007, but he'd been involved in the workshop before that, playing a totally different character. But which one? Well, Bart played Igor, and if you got excited because you knew the answer, that would make you an Igor Bivor. Interestingly, Corey English, who's the actor who replaced Bart as Doc Brown in the West End production of Back to the Future, later played Igor, whilst Bart himself was playing Frederick Frankenstein slightly later on during the first national American tour of the show in 2009. A lovely connection there. Well, let's move on to another fictional doctor 
who's then turned up in musicals following adaptations of the original works. And in my opinion, I think the best-known Doctor in fiction is probably Dr John Watson, the friend and biographer of Sherlock Holmes. Now, in 1965, the Holmesian musical Baker Street saw Dr Watson as a character throughout the piece, but he only gets one solo song, which is called A Married Man. But which actor played Dr John Watson in that original London production of the musical Baker Street. And to delight you, and probably distract you as you think about it, let's hear one of my favourite songs from Runesicle the Musical by Sam Cochran and Alex Prescott. And this song is Freaky Troll, beautifully performed by Alex Prescott. How dare <laughs> you <laughs> trespass Try and weaken us first. Weaken us how? Just don't let it get to you. <gasps> Hello. I'm gonna turn you into taxidermy. Swap your head with a pigeon. Ha! Huh? Pigeon face. I'm gonna break up your parents' marriage. Then I'll be your stepdaddy. And I won't show up to your school play. Ooh. I'll turn you into a cushion and sit on you. I'll use your skin as leather for my new pair of shoes. I'll put you into a cage in my one man human zoo. And I think that you go nicely in my human fondue. Come on! I'm a freaky troll. I'm a freaky troll. I'm a freaky troll. As my sick troll, I'll get you a roll in a French musical. Pace the rent. But it's not a career. I'm gonna stream your favorite shows from over there in the UK. Whisper spoilers in your ears. I'll give you bad fashion advice so you look like a fool. I'll take your swimming and tell everyone you're peeing in the pool. Turn you into a spirit level, the stupidest tool. And I'll make you wear a t shirt saying freaking trolls rule. Come on! Freaky Troll! Freaky Troll from Runesicle. And remember, you can see Runesicle in a videoed version, complete with its optional endings on each scene, so you can enjoy it as a make-your-own-adventure kind of musical on YouTube. But the question was, what's the name of the actor who played John Watson in the original London production of Baker Street, the Sherlock Holmes musical from 1965? And the answer is Peter Salis who's probably most famous for being Clegg in Last of a Summer Wine, which is the world's longest-running sitcom. But he was also Eric Penley in a Doctor Who story called The Ice Warriors from 1967. And we started today's episode of Musical Talk with references to Doctor Who. But of course, I think Peter Salis is going to be best remembered as being the voice of Wallace in the Nick Park-directed Wallace and Gromit films. Next question. But we're going to stay with Sherlock Holmes and Dr Watson for this one as well. There was another Sherlock Holmes pastiche called The 7% Solution. Originally a book and it became a film in 1976 with Robert Duval playing Dr Watson. Now it's not actually a musical but it does feature a song especially written for it by Stephen Sondheim called I Never Do Anything Twice. And just to repeat that, it's called I Never Do Anything Twice. Hmm. And it's sung by the Madam of a Brothel. Now, that character doesn't have a name in the film, but the actress who plays her is the Belgian-French singer Regine Zeilberberg. And here's the question. What was her other connection with Stephen Sondheim? And the song we're going to hear as you ponder the answer to that question is again from Vote Macbeth by John Paul Little. It's the rather wonderful song with the rather wonderful, if slightly brutal title, Bitch, I'm Hecate. Here she comes. A 
one thing you should know In life you're either the hunter or the priest So I learned long ago that putting on a show Gives me the power to slay You feel my breath on your neck and you know that I'm closing for the kill And if you don't cash my check I have the power to wreck you And I probably will Yes, betcha I'm Hecate Betcha I'm Hecate Come join the party Bask in my fame, oh say my name I can make you all smile I'll string you up like a puppet on a rope And if I like your style And if you make it worthwhile I'll let you have a sniff of hope I'll help you learn how to shine But that requires you following my code I'll drink your secrets like wine And if you step out of line I'll let you stand on a mine And I'll watch you explode Oh, bitch, I'm Hecate Fetch me a latte Let's play the game, oh say my name H-E-C-A-T-E The queen of the news TV At me say narcissistic I'm sadomasochistic And my journalistic integrity Bitch, I'm a cat. Boys, join the party. You know I'm to blame. You head down to run, so say my name and bring me my butt. And there we are, the rather splendidly titled Bitch, I'm Hecate by John Paul Little from Vote Macbeth. And the question before that was, what is the other connection that the Belgian-French singer Régine Zeilberberg has with Stephen Sondheim beyond introducing I Never Do Anything Twice in the 7% Solution Sherlock Holmes film? Well, the answer is, very much later in life, in June 2011, she appeared as Solange Lafitte, one of the characters in Follies, at the production at the Kennedy Centre in Washington. And if you don't know the name of the character, Solange, she's the one who sings Ah Paris, as caricature a French song as you can imagine. Well, let's stay with Sherlock Holmes and, of course, Dr Watson for one more question. There's another musical version of the Holmes-Watson relationship, but at one step removed. And that was the Disney film called Basil of Baker Street, also known as Basil the Great Mouse Detective, which was a film from 1986 and, incidentally, one of my favourite Disney films. Basil, the central character, is clearly the Holmes character in the film, but what was the name of his principal sidekick? In other words, what was the name of his Dr Watson? And I'm talking about the character here, not the actor. Well, as you know, a question here is always a cue for a song. So let us have a song. 
And it's a particular favourite of mine, as anyone who listens to this programme regularly will know. It's A Hole in My Soul from the wonderful Timpson the Musical by Sam Cochran, Chris Baker, Tom Slade and Theo Kaplan. Mum won't let me follow my dream. I want to be part of something bigger. I, I want to invent. <laughs> I'm sick of sandals. <laughs> I'm livid with loafers. <laughs> I'm flipped off with flip-flops. <laughs> I hate shoes. <gasps> Oh, I hate shoes. I hate shoes. Laces, lining, tongue, and top piece. Aglet, eyelid, arch, and throat line. Insole, outsole, heel, and toe cap. Fine, fine. Which direction do you go when your life is tight around the toe? Which direction do you when you want to be in another's shoes How can you avoid a scandal When you're as useful as Achilles' sandal How can you avoid a mishap When you're on a tightrope in steel toe caps Toe caps Laces lining tongue and top piece Aglet, eyelid, arch and throat line Insole, outsole, heel and toe cap a hole in my soul and it's taking me off beat I think I've lost control You can't dance with two left feet Oh shoes Cross the upward What's going on in my shop? of my intemper, this desire to invent, to prevent me from my ascent, through giving a hundred percent, I just got a vent and lament the pent up feeling that my life has been misspent, save me from this torment, ever since I was young I was prevented from getting farther, because of the absence of my father, he took his bros when rogue won't pay the debt he owed, his son abandoned, he did what he always planned and left us on a shoestring, but here's the thing, the only trace he left about this place was a singular shoelace. There's a hole in my soul. I think I've lost control. There's a hole in my soul, and it's a taking me off beat. I think I've lost control. You can't dance with, you can't dance with, you can't dance with two. That was the marvellous song, A Hole in My Soul, from Timpson the Musical. I adore that song. But the question was, what is the name of the character who is Basil the Great Mouse Detective's sidekick and friend in the film of the same name? Well, the answer is Major Dr David Q Dawson, which is as close to Watson as you can get, I think. Interestingly, there's another link with Doctor Who. And do remember, it was Doctor Who's 60th birthday which has inspired the Doctor theme in today's episode. And that Doctor Who link is that Basil, the Great Mouse Detective, was voiced by the actor Barry Ingham, who was also in the first Peter Cushing Doctor Who film, Doctor Who and the Daleks, playing the character Aladon. Now, another performer in the film Basil the Great Mouse Detective was the great Vincent Price. He played the principal villain in that cartoon film, Rattigan, the Moriarty avatar. But he himself once played a doctor. He was the abominable Dr. Fibes from the 1971 comic horror film set in London in 1925. Now, this film is not a musical. 
but it does feature an enormous number of songs from musical films and shows, including Over the Rainbow from The Wizard of Oz, of course, All I Do Is Dream of You, which you may know from Singing in the Rain, and which was originally introduced in the Joan Crawford film Sadie McKee, the song You Stepped Out of a Dream from Ziegfeld Girl, and One for My Baby, sung by Fred Astaire in the film The Sky's the Limit. However, there's a problem with this. What is the problem with these songs being included in the abominable Dr. Fives? Time for a song as you ponder the question. And this song is from an Edinburgh fringe show which I adored from this summer called Dead Man's Suitcase. And the song is by Felix Westcott and it's called So What About Me? Never seems to care for me. No one notices I'm there or sees I'm the only one standing here, always standing. The song So What About Me from Dead Man's Suitcase by Felix Westcott. And I'm delighted to say there'll be an episode of Musical Talk about Dead Man's Suitcase in the new year. But the question was, why is it a problem that the 1971 film The Abominable Dr. Fibes, featuring Vincent Price, set in London in 1925, feature the songs Somewhere Over the Rainbow, All I Do Is Dream of You, You Stepped Out of a Dream, and One for My Baby, and One More for the Road? Well, the answer is very simple, and it's a matter of time, and that is that all these songs were written after 1925. 
which is when the film is set. So they are anachronistic. Well, we've already mentioned Vincent Price, so let's stay with him for a little bit. Occasionally, as we've heard, Vincent Price could be persuaded to sing. He sings the song Goodbye So Soon and Isn't It a Shame? Or perhaps I should say Goodbye So Soon and Isn't It a Shame? When he's playing Rattigan in Basil the Great Mouse Detective. But for my money, he's at his best when he's playing Sir Despard Murgatroyd in Gilbert and Sullivan's Ruddy Gore which, of course, is a singing role. And in that show, he gets to sing the fastest patter song in the whole GNS canon, which is My Eyes Are Fully Open to My Awful Situation. Now, that particular Savoy opera doesn't feature any doctors, but there are doctors scattered around the character lists of the Gilbert and Sullivan canon. There's Dr Tannhauser in The Grand Duke from 1896, which is the last full-length collaboration between Gilbert and Sullivan, but... From one of their earlier shows, The Sorcerer from 1877, there is another doctor. And the question is simple. What is his name? Well, let's hear another song. And this is a fabulously funny song by Glenn Clark and George Gem from their musical The Extras Strike Back, a musical tribute to the forgotten heroes of Star Wars. The song is called Sith Lord Kink and it's performed so beautifully and so hilariously by George here. I hope that you'll enjoy it as much as I always do. I've actually seen George perform this now a couple of times and he really brings his character to life when you see him on stage. If you ever get a chance to see this show live, do. George is a marvellously charismatic performer. Let's hear Sith Lord Kink. I accept all responsibility for this failure and as such, accept any punishment. Willingly. Put out a glide, I can make a real mess. You can cut the tension with a knife. You never know who's next to do the life. Rest in peace, Harry. You can feel the evil when it's in the room. If you stand too close, you can feel the truth. No space to make mistakes in his eyes. No place to run and no place to hide. But what he doesn't know is I get real steps when he lifts me up. With his first two, good laid up. Tighten your grip. Hey! 
There we are, Sith Lord Kink, meeting an appropriate round of applause. And that was by Glenn Clark and George Gim, the very talented people behind The Extra Strike Back, a musical tribute to the forgotten heroes of Star Wars. And a very different kind of show to the one that was in the question, which is, what is the name of the Doctor character from Gilbert and Sullivan's The Sorcerer, first performed in 1877? His name is Doctor Daly. And in this case, he's a vicar. He's the vicar of Ploverly. Now, there's a joke in his name, which you may not have picked up. He's Dr. Daly, D.D. And D.D. represents something that's appropriate for our discussion today. In fact, Gilbert would return to this kind of doctor again in The Yeoman of the Guard, the Gilbert and Sullivan operetta from 1888, when in his song, A Private Buffoon is a Light-Hearted Loon, he features the following line. Comes a bishop, maybe, or a solemn DD. But what is a DD? And bearing in mind that Dr Daly was a vicar, let's hear a song which seems a bit appropriate. This is the song Preach It Like a Gospel. Once again from Vote Macbeth by John Paul Liddle. I could not have imagined I'd be standing here today Back at all the obstacles that once stood in our way Life is painful and confusing but it's still a cabaret And a few things that I've learned I'd like to share now if I may The most important lesson from my wild and misspent youth If you preach it like a gospel Then it sure sounds like the truth Preach, preach, preach it like a gospel If the message doesn't last, then hey, at least the gloss will Your story may not be about that cross upon a hill But just preach it like a gospel First I say to you today, give thanks for what we won yes. The civil war is over and a new day has begun yes. The suffering it caused, it cannot be undone no. And now we'll beat the traitor and we're standing in the sun Old Coddles had his cake and just like Marie Antoine He can take that cake and shove it up the barrel of his gun Preach, preach, preach it like a gospel If your first try can't convince them, maybe argue in the toss well They take the cake, they won't mistake the frosting for the chill So just preach it like a gospel Secondly, I say to you, I know what my next post is Lift your glasses high and let's give thanks to our hostess yes. When duty came a calling, yes. she answered that call postest yes. And following tradition, I'll just say that she's the mostest I'm running out of rhyming, so I say again the toastest To the hostess with the mostest, who done our most of mostest Preach, preach, preach it like a gospel If they aren't buying it, then make them think the boss will Your coins are never counted till they're tossed into the till So just preach it like a gospel Thirdly, I am thankful to the one who took my part While others win the battle, Banco always wins the heart God or thought people would follow and he went all born apart Banco kept the army loyal, now Cordor's blown apart I know he'll keep you safe when it's my time to depart For his children's children's children, this is just the start Finally, I'm thankful that Cordor's six feet below We owe this place 
blessed victory to Macbeth who struck the blow. Whoa. He went to do some smiting and he surely smote the foe. Whoa. And now folks we are smitten and our thanks we need to show. show. Promotion to Vice President is surely apropos. Right. And when someone starts his quits and then they have to cross and pro. Oh, 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 preach, preach, preaching like a gospel. Nothing stops a rolling stone like gathering some us will. Make sure they are focused on the cost and not the bill. And preach, 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 preach in like a gospel. Well, there we are. Preach it like a gospel from Vote Macbeth by John Paul Little. We've had three songs from that fantastic show so far today, and I don't mind a bit. Now, back to Gilbert and Sullivan. What is a DD? Given that it is actually mentioned in that form in the lyrics of one of the songs. Well, the answer is very simple. A DD is a doctor of divinity, which is a clergyman who has studied to the academic level of a doctor, like Dr. Daly, DD. And as I mentioned, the reference to a DD actually comes overtly in the Yeoman of the Guard in the song A Private Buffoon is a Light-Hearted Loon. It's a song that the character Jack Point, who is a jester, sings about how difficult it is to be funny in the right circumstances. And the lyrics of the song include, and we might as well go in with the DD reference, comes a bishop maybe, or a solemn DD, oh beware of his anger provoking, better not pull his hair, don't stick pins in his chair, he don't understand practical joking. If the jests that you crack have an orthodox smack, you may get a bland smile from these sages. But should they uh, by chance be imported from France, half a crown is stopped out of your wages. A joke imported from France, of course, is code for a dirty joke. Well, let's move from one DD, who is a doctor of divinity, that's Dr Daly, to another DD. This is Dr Doolittle, a character you will surely have heard of from musical theatre. He was originally a character created during the trenches of the First World War by a serving soldier, Hugh Lofting, who then put him into a book in 1920. In fact, that was just the first of a series of books. The story and the character were then incorporated into a musical film in 1967, and then it became a stage musical in 1998. But what is Dr Doolittle's full name? And to give you just two or three minutes of pondering time, let's hear the Runesicle theme from Runesicle, which is the RuneScape musical by Sam Cochran and Alex Prescott. Homies, all my homo sapiens, you ready for a musical that's gonna be runescapian? We'll take you on a journey from Lumbridge to the wilderness. If it's BVP or BVM, it's sort of about is killing us. We're gonna commit to the rhymes that we spit. That's why we know this show's gonna be a critical hit. Yeah, it's the original, not a wannabe. La-da-da-da-da. It's the mother loaded MMORPG. Yep, for all the new, what's a new? Means newbie. Ha, <laughs> what a new. M means massively mountainous, a monstrous, a myriad of maps marking mountains full of monsters. Another M. M. Multiply, meaning members multiply. Millions of mortals, more than us to modify. O. o. Online, on the web, obviously. RP. RP. Role playing, players roll with personality. And G. It's a game. <laughs> go schools, gems, gold, goats. Go gynecology. What? Rune Escape your room and shape your fate. Log on at noon to stay up too late. But one problem still remains Every player in every game Every hero needs a name So what's your username? Lance underscore 054 What? Really? First 53 taken, were they? Actually, yeah. Oh, they were. All right. Oh, five, four. Escape your room 
in the shape of your fate Log on at noon, stay up too late And I won't tell a lie Cos I'm ready for this rest I want XP So I'm gonna run a dice And I ain't too good But I'll just lie by four What's your username? Lance underscore 054 Oh yeah You did mention there we are, the theme from Runesicle the Musical by Sam Cochran and Alex Prescott. And that is the musical that you can see on YouTube that I mentioned earlier. But the question was, what is the full name of Dr Doolittle? Well, the answer is Dr John Doolittle. And you know, it's taken me over 50 years to find that out. Well, let's stick with the film, the 1967 film musical, in fact, of Dr Doolittle. The songs were written by Leslie Brickus and so was the screenplay. Now, the title song reveals that the good doctor has a profound philosophy. That is the exact term used. What is this profound philosophy? And to be honest, what's wrong with it? And by way of distraction, let's hear a lively Charleston-style song called Live Wires from the musical A Girl Miss Red. Live Wires from the musical A Girl Misread by Mel Lorman, Matt Finch, Tom Coleman and Owen Corey. Now the question, if you recall, was that in the title song of the musical film Doctor Doolittle, the Doctor is described as having a profound philosophy. What is this philosophy and what is wrong with it? Well, the answer is that in that song it's asserted that Doctor Doolittle believes that if animals can be friends, says he, why can't we? I mean, it's a charming and indeed lovely sentiment, but of course it's nonsense, as any lamb will tell you when lying down with the wolf. Yum yum dinner time, says the wolf. 
Animals aren't friends with each other, and therefore I do feel that Dr. Doolittle is up a gum tree if he's basing his life on a wrong philosophy. Now, interesting fact, Vincente Minelli was briefly involved in the production of the film as director, but he left quite early on. I think that's one of the great what-might-have-been moments. Now, Dr. Doolittle, if he's a doctor of anything, is probably a vet. And there is another vet who appears in a musical. So let's make that person the subject of our next question. The character is called Dr. Thomas Parker. He sings a song called Dance With Me Darling from a well-known musical from 1997. But what is the name of that musical? And to take us through to the answer, let's hear another song from the Extras Strike Back, a musical tribute to the forgotten heroes of Star Wars by Glenn Clark and George Gem. This is the Wampa song, sung brilliantly by Stephen Quinn. And we join the song just after meeting our friendly Wampa in a very, very cold cave on the planet Hoth. Wampa, Wampa, Wampa. Wampa Fest! Oh, Wampa Fest is very special because it only happens every 300 years and normally I'm alone but this time I've got a friend and hung him up right by his feet that's just the way we want to greet and so I'll make some food and start the party mood for the Wampa 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 Fest Hop is rather cold Wampa's gotta be bold with making friends how you doing? So when he wakes up, I'll make him a supper that never ends. I'm just a friendly lover. I feel that that Wampa feeling. Wampa Fest is happening today. I should make sure that he's all right. I hope it's comfortable for him. He seems kind, with lots of charm. I'm sure he's nice. Won't do no arm. <laughs> arm. Big what's that in the snow? Oh, wait, I need to go prepare for Wampa, 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 Wampa. Wampa Fest, I have to thaw. My frozen course gently does it. No need for force. Oh, wait, God, there's the wine. Oh, this is so divine. And the Wampa, 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 Wampa. Wampa Fest, I hope his feet are warm. Now he's out of the storm because I saved him. Oh, yeah. I hope he likes to eat roasted tauntaun meat. I got nothing else. I'm just a friendly wampa. I'm feeling that wampa feeling. Wampa Fest is happening today. Oh, oh I think he's going to wake up soon. Quinn singing the Wampa song from Glenn and Gems, the extra strike back, a musical tribute to the forgotten heroes of Star Wars. Another lovely song from a lovely show. Well, the question was, what is the name of the 1997 musical that features a character called Dr. Thomas Parker, who's a vet and who sings the song Dance With Me Darling? The musical is Bat Boy. And of course, it has a score by Lawrence O'Keefe, who has since written Legally Blonde and Heathers. So he knows what he's doing. Well, as W.S. Gilbert spotted, doctorates can be obtained in lots of professions, not just medical ones. And in America, where Bat Boy is set, dentists all have doctorates. And when one thinks of dentists in musicals, our minds naturally turn, I think, to the little shop of horrors, because it features the best-known dentist in fiction outside of Marathon Man, probably. But at least this one gets to sing. But what is the name of this dentist. And whilst this dentist isn't very charming, the following song is. It's another by Sue Casson, once again from Two Tigers, and the song is called Home.
Home is the place where the wind blows Southerly, nestling close in the bay Into the distance a stream flows Silently, cast silver whispers of spray Endless plains beneath a cloud-flecked sky There is where my child's spirit flies Spirit flies away Far in the wildness a bush burns Shadowless, fringing a meadow of gold Down in the valley the mood turns Emptiness, mist rising mauve from the cold Thundering silence hangs beneath the hill Sunlight breaking through the chill, through the chill, still light, making my soul take flight. The lovely song Home, from Two Tigers, written and sung by Sue Casson. And the question was, very simple, what is the name of the dentist in the Little Shop of Horrors? And his name is Orin Scrivello. In the film version, made in 1986, that character was played by Steve Martin. And interestingly, we're actually told that he is a DDS, a Doctor of Dental Surgery. I only mention that because there are actually two different kinds of dental doctorate that you can get in America to call yourself a dentist. Look at the level of detail we go into here in Musical Talk. And whilst we're on the subject, I have an amazing bit of trivia for you. One of the lyricists of Flora Dora, the great 1899 smash hit musical, which is still referenced today, was a man called Edward Boyd Jones. And he was not only a lyricist, he was also an actor... And he was also a trained dentist. There you go, fact fans. You heard it here first. Now, we all think of Little Shop of Horrors as being a musical either on stage or film. But it was actually a non-musical film in 1960, first of all. And Jack Nicholson was in that film. He played Wilbur Force. However, later on, he played a doctor in a musical. And that was in the film of The Who's Tommy from 1975. That doctor has the rather splendid name of Dr A. Quaxon, which I think tells you everything you need to know about that character. And that character features in the song There's a Doctor. So if that's not on point for the theme of Doctors today, I can't think of something which is. But who is the director of the 1975 film in which Jack Nicholson plays a doctor? The Who's Tommy. And for this, I think we need a piece of appropriately themed music. This is the title song from Vampire Hospital Waiting Room, a cult classic from the Edinburgh Festival Fringe. This song is by Theo McCabe and Craig Mevan, and you can hear Joe McArdle in this cast singing as the character Dr Bloom. Oh, 
humour our doctors will always assume a respectable level of professionalism. The water, 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 the the water, 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 the the water, the water, the water, the water, the There we are, Joe McArdle playing Dr. Bloom and the rest of the cast in Vampire Hospital Waiting Room, the title song of the show of the same name, written by Theo McCabe and Craig Methan. And if you want to hear more about that, then go along to episodes 658 and 659 of Musical Talk, where I had the great pleasure of interviewing a number of people connected with that show and its sister show, Apocalypse Cruise Ship Love Affair. What a fabulous title. But the question was, who was the director of The Who's Tommy? The 1975 film, which featured Jack Nicholson as Dr Quaxon. And the answer is Ken Russell, the iconoclastic British director, who also directed a very different kind of musical, The Boyfriend, by Sandy Wilson, who hated the adaptation of his work, funnily enough. That film was made in 1971 and also features a character called Tommy. But in this case, that Tommy was played by Broadway singer and dancer Tommy Tune. And his stage debut was in the musical Baker Street in America in 1965. See how circular it is when you look at it closely? Well, let's go on to a different kind of musical doctor. 2023 sadly saw the passing of George Logan, who was one half of Hinge and Bracket. And the half that he was was the character of Dr. Evadne Mona Montpellier Hinge. Famously, Dr. Evadne Hinge, who was the tall, slim, disapproving accompanist to the flamboyant former opera singer De Milde Brackett. Now, the thing about Hinge and Brackett were that they were a long-standing, very professional drag act, who were first discovered at the Edinburgh Festival Fringe in the early 70s and won the coveted Perrier Award and never really looked back. Which is ironic, given that the song We Said We'd Never Look Back from Julian Slade's Salad Days was one of the songs in their repertory. They were a couple of performers I adored because they acted like real people. You really felt that you knew them as real people. And whilst they were, to a degree, caricatures, they were perhaps more flamboyant stereotypes, living truisms, if you like, of people that we might have met. Now, Dr Hinge was born in 1920, a couple of years after her lifelong colleague and oldest friend, Dame Hilda Brackett, a fact which she mentions at every available opportunity. And I'm taking these words from Dr Hinge's fictional autobiography. But here's the question. They achieved such fame together, Hinge and Brackett, as a singing, performing act, that in 1983 they appeared in a televised Royal Opera House production of the operetta by Johann Strauss II, first performed in 1874, called Die Fledermaus, The Bat. You will undoubtedly have heard of it. But what two songs did Hinge and Brackett sing in Die Fledermaus? And I think this is quite a difficult question. So I'm going to give you extra time to think about it. And the way I'm going to do that is by giving you a double bill of songs. Now these songs come from the wonderful musical about a doctor 
called Jekyll versus Hyde by the insanely talented Lawrence Owen and Lindsay Sharman, who did a mashup musical essentially of a serious and non-serious adaptation of the Jekyll and Hyde story, sort of squashed into one. It was on at the Edinburgh Festival Fringe in 2019, and you can find out more about it in episode 637 of Musical Talk. But let's hear the two songs. The first is called The Transformation Song, and it's from the serious version of Jekyll and Hyde. And then there's Whoa, Whoa, What's Up? from the rather less serious adaptation of Jekyll and Hyde, which you can see side by side in the musical Jekyll vs Hyde. And goodness me, these two songs back to back really show you the versatility of that songwriting team by Lawrence Owen and Lindsay Sharman. And here are the two songs now. Why is it good is praised and bad is shunned When bad comes naturally to everyone Why do we judge the evil that men do When we ourselves have evil in us too And is it really in God's plan That we make pains to quash the natural state of man Well not I I will tolerate this fantasy no more I will be freer than man's ever been before Free to explore the other side of humankind Which for so long has been mistrusted and maligned And which feckless laws forbid With just one draught I shall ascend into a playground of the air upon your face You're perfect My friend, the things that I will do with you Or should I say the things you'll make me do You think my thoughts, but do you speak my tongue? Quick, Jekyll, speak! Cogito, ergo, sum A voice as ugly as a voice can be I dared not hope for such depravity I am invisible behind your face This flesh and bone the perfect hiding place The perfect hiding place But of course You must be named And for the service you provide I shall call you Me Musical Talk Picture the scene! The staff room of St. Bart's High School somewhere in America! Dr. Jekyll, head of chemistry, chats to his pals, gym teacher Mr. Utterson, and substitute physics teacher Victor Frankenstein. Hey dudes, what's up? It's everyone's favorite chemistry teacher, Dr. Jekyll. Gee man, bro, where you been? Checking out the cheerleaders at practice? Oh, high five! High five! That's your trick, you old dog. I've only got eyes for one little lady. Juicy Lucy Lanyon. Oh yeah, you had a date with Dr. Lanyon last night. How did it go? Oh, hey, Victor. Oh, what's that smell? Did you fart? No, you splashed me with sulfur as a joke, remember? Oh yeah, (laughs) that was pretty funny. Anyway, let me tell you about my date. Went to the science museum with my special 
less intellectual. They got a special exhibit on how you make babies. It's also sexual. I could tell by the sweat on her face that her heart was starting to race. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What next? Gee, man, you're such a tease. Did she let you touch her biologies? A gentleman never tells. Oh, come on. But a scientist explains. Yeah. Let me tell you a little thing about the laws of attraction. The human brain is especially reliant on odors to make connections. So I occasionally wafted my manly aromas in her direction. I could tell she was feeling the heat by the way she was grinding her teeth. Whoa, 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 what next? You're teasing our principles. When's your story gonna get physical? I knew she was infatuated. Cause when I spoke, her pupils dilated. And that's what happens when a lady feels arousal. Or panic! And hers were gigantic! Go here. Oh, nobody likes a substitute teacher. <sighs> oh, it's Lucy. Hey, Lucy. Ready for our big second date tonight? What do you mean a rain check? But I thought, I thought you liked... Hello? Hello? She broke up with me. Oh, that's too bad. Shut up, Victor. I can't believe this. Why do nice guys never get the girls? Girls like bad boys, maybe you're kind of a square. Shut up, Victor! Oh, maybe you're right. God, girls are so shallow. I try so hard to be nice and no one appreciates it. I bet if she knew I had a dark side, she'd really like me. You want a bad boy, Lanyon? I'll show you a bad boy. I'll figure out a way to unleash the monster inside. Then she'll go out with me. Cause I'm bad! Who's bad? That's me! Mm, you got it! I'm bad, who's bad, I'm really bad, yeah, I'm really, really bad. Oh, fucking hell. There we are. Whoa, whoa, what's up? And the much more serious transformation song from Jekyll vs Hyde by Lawrence Owen and Lindsay Sharman. And don't forget to go along to their online presence so that you can hear episodes of their musical spoof gothic drama, yes, all of those words, Mockery Manor. It's well worth listening to. But the question was... What two songs did Hinge and Brackett sing in 1983 in the Royal Opera House as part of Die Fledermaus by Johann Strauss II? Well, the answer is Three Little Maids from School from the Mikado, written in 1885, and the Donkey Duet, sometimes known as Trot Here and There, from Veronique, which was an opera comique from 1898 by André Messager. And you might be thinking, well, hang on a minute, those two songs aren't by Johann Strauss. How on earth did they smuggle in two songs from two totally different shows into Die Fledermaus? Well, the answer is, if you know Die Fledermaus, is that there is something called the guest scene. And in this case, the Royal Opera House production did a bit of stunt casting. They brought in Hinge and Brackett to do two songs from their repertoire as guests in the guest scene, and they weren't alone. There was also Charles Aznavour and Kiri Takanoa. I'd like to have been in the green room when that production was over. And in a bit of circularity, it's important to note that George Logan died only recently. He was Dr Hinge, and as they say, we shall never see their like again. But the circularity is that we also lost the wonderful Kit Hesketh Harvey much earlier in the year. But I have found a rather marvellous connection between the two, between Kit Hesketh Harvey and George Logan, one half of Hinge and Bracket. Because Kit left some messages on a video on YouTube of Hinge and Bracket in full flow. And he wrote, I was one half of Kit and the Widow, which incidentally was another marvellous British cabaret act, in West End shows, TV specials, an eon ago. Very often I was asked, Aren't you Hinge and Bracket out of drag? What a compliment. Seriously, he wrote, which is a very generous tribute from one brilliant cabaret performer to another. And 2023 was cruel for taking them both from us. 
And just to finish on the hinge and bracket element of this quiz, I found a wonderful news story from 1998. It's from a local newspaper, and I'm just going to read the first two lines. One is the headline, and one is the first line of the story. And sometimes you just can't make these things up. Here's the headline. A crew widow has angered relatives by leaving her entire £40,000 estate to comedy duo Hinge and Bracket. And then the first line of the story is, Elmer Dutton, whose Newfield drive home was a shrine to the female impersonators, ignored caring family and friends to give all her possessions to the famous double act. Sometimes life is much stranger than fiction. Well, we're coming to our last question of the day, and therefore shortly our last song. We heard a song from Jekyll vs Hyde, so I think it's time to wrap up the questions with a question associated with that story. Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde was written by Robert Louis Stevenson, and I think most people who listen to Musical Talk will be familiar at least with the concept of the 1990 musical version by Frank Wildhorn, Leslie Brickus and Steve Cooden. But did you know that Kirk Douglas starred in a television film musical version of Jekyll and Hyde in 1973? Well, he did. And the question is, who wrote most of the score of that 1973 television adaptation? And there's someone incredibly famous. In fact, they're so famous, I was surprised to discover that this show was part of their CV because I didn't know it and I thought I knew most of this person's writing. And the last song today comes from a pantomime. It is a pantomime version of Jekyll and Hyde. And it's actually by Saywood and Ribbits. And if you think that surname sounds familiar, you're right. It's something I wrote years ago. This song is called Essence Distillation Engine and it's sung by Dr Henry Jekyll and Friends in the pantomime version of Jekyll and Hyde called Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde Make Mine a Double. And I think you'll see the influence in my lyrics of W.S. Gilbert, not in terms of the quality, but certainly a love of patter. Let's hear that song now. My essence distillation cabinet will save us all. Well, that's what you think. It's Dr. Jekyll celebrated, automated, calibrated, patent pending essence distillation engine. Dr. Jekyll's purifying, de allying, good supplying, mix de blending essence distillation engine. Put inside a thing that's mixed. Roll them up, sir, is a thing that's clever. Press this knob and then it's fixed. Separates things that were joined forever. Purifies all muddied stuff. Roll them up, ma'am. I can see you. You're not sure. Give the engine long enough, it comes out pure. So roll right up for Dr. Jekyll's greatest invention. The proof is here for all of you to see. And you'll observe it does its stuff without intervention. These things combined, now unentwined, are free! It's Dr. Jekyll's most effective fault corrective pan selective floor amending essence distillation engine. I never Dr. saw a thing in all my days of every single match of praise. I never thought none of the could be bought for any rate of any kind of essence come and join distillation the shakes and retain men and other one. I'll make potions by the score. Roll an absurd, this'll make you healthy. I'll do good amongst the poor. And what is more, it will make us wealthy. I'm a man who has a dream. Roll on up, sir. He's a prize from Nobel. Through my engine and my scheme, everyone well. So roll right up and buy a cup of Jekyll's elixir. Eternal life and now we hold the key. So bless this day, I only pray that I can say next year. From ill health's yoke, these happy folk are free. Oh, I never saw a thing in all the days of every good to be batching for this batching help of extending essence distillation engine. Dr. Jekyll separating, non-conflating, decreating, reinstating, seriating, permutating, isolating, viscerating, amputating, never-ending essence distillation engine. So ring the death knell for diseases. We'll keep them at bay. So no more sneezes. And for wheezes. Antithesis. We could hear a panacea. All are well from this. There we are, Essence Distillation Engine from Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde Make Mine a Double, the pantomime version of Jekyll and Hyde. And I hope you'll forgive me for my self indulgence. But the question was who was the famous composer who wrote most of the score for the 1973 television film musical version of Jekyll and Hyde starring Kirk Douglas? And the answer is. Lionel Bart, the man who wrote Oliver. 
Interestingly, the 1973 film also featured Sir Michael Redgrave, Susan Hampshire and Donald Pleasance. So it was no amateur affair. But here's something even more interesting. Not only did it feature songs by Lionel Bart, it also contained within it three songs from a 1968 stage production of a musical called After You, Mr Hyde, which featured Alfred Drake originally on stage and which was written by Norman Sachs and Mel Mendel. And one of those three songs which survived this very rare stage production of After You, Mr Hyde and went into the 1973 television film musical version was called I Bought a Bicycle, where, and I quote from an online review, Dr Jekyll, played by Kirk Douglas, waxes poetic about the virtues of bicycle ownership. And talking of online reviews, I found a rather wonderful one-liner about this musical film, which simply reads, What if we made My Fair Lady, but added in Kirk Douglas as a hairy singing pervert who is a little too into bicycles? Well, there we are. That's the end of the questions for this year's Musical Talk quiz. Fifteen questions? How many did you get right? I think more than anything else, it's shown me how many doctors there are in the world of musical theatre and films. And that's not the end of it. There are going to be more doctors mentioned in passing in episodes of Musical Talk in 2024. Not least, and this is only a selection, we'll be hearing about Dr Acula from Potty the Plant, which was the Musical Talk's pick of the fringe, 2023. And you'll be hearing the episode where I interview the people behind that in 2024. And I want you to hear that because it's a wonderful conversation. We'll be hearing about Doctors Ballinger, Gary and Hyman from the 1979 Bob Fosse musical film All That Jazz in a conversation with the marvellous Tom Arnold. And tangentially, we'll be hearing about the success or otherwise of Dr Sherman, who's the person who assigns Evan Hansen his letter writing task, which triggers the plot of Dear Evan Hansen. All of that coming up on Musical Talk in 2024. Now, I mentioned Tom Arnold. And I'm indebted to Tom that the piece of music that I always use to open and close the Christmas episode of Musical Talk is from a show that he wrote called The House of Edgar, which is a wonderful musical which addresses the legacy of Edgar Allan Poe. And in case you're wondering if Edgar Allan Poe had a doctor connection, of course he did. And I'm going to mention that now to round off this episode thematically. It's almost like these things are planned and not just thrown together. Edgar Allan Poe wrote a story called The System of Dr. Tar and Professor Feather. And so with that Edgar Allan Poe fact and therefore flavour, I hope floating around in the ether, and let's not forget the word ether is merely feather with the F taken off, certainly in the spelling of Professor Feather in the title of that story, it's appropriate that we come to the end of this episode and enjoy again Tom Arnold's beautiful music to the house of Edgar. On behalf of everyone from Musical Talk, May we wish you a terribly good Christmas and a fabulously exciting 2024. And we hope that you can join us then or whenever for more episodes of Musical Talk. Goodbye. This episode of Musical Talk, edited and presented by Foss Ribbits. Copyright Musical Talk 2023, except for the songs where the copyright remains with the creators in each case. And my enormous thanks to each and every one of them for allowing me to play their wonderful songs in this episode of Musical Talk.
To find out more about the world of musical talk and listen to past episodes, go along to our website, www.musicaltalk.co.uk or subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts and follow us on the usual social media networks like Facebook, Instagram and X, formerly known as Twitter. And if you want to follow me on the latter, you can at Musical Talk Thos. Hooray! Hooray! Thank you.